As the anticipation builds and grows for the big day in Ayodhya on the 22nd of January, it's worth taking a step back and asking, how was that consensus actually built? Today, we'll be talking to one of India's most respected, loved and followed spiritual gurus. All of you are familiar with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, but not many of you know, perhaps, about the role he played over many years as a mediator. At one point, a Supreme Court appointed mediator talking to both communities, building consensus, even at one point suggesting an out-of-court settlement, and in many ways preparing the ground, for the Supreme Court verdict that would eventually come. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, as a spiritual leader, has always used his influence to try and mediate conflict, whether in Jammu and Kashmir or with what was then known as the Babri Masjid Ram Janama Bhumi dispute. Joining us on the program this evening, a very, very special guest, our newsmaker on the program today, Gurudev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Uh, Namaskar, Gurudev, and a pleasure to see you after a very long gap of time. Good to see you. How are you, Gurudev? Very good, Barka. Namaskar. It's so nice. Namaskar, yeah, to Gurudev. See you. Let me start by asking you what you're feeling about the 22nd of January. This is a day that has come after many years of conflict. I think at one point, even you said when you were mediator, that we have lost enough blood, sweat, tears and energy on it. When you look ahead at this day, the Ram Mandir, a Pran Pratishtan that is supposed to take place on the 22nd of January. What is the one overriding thought, the one overriding emotion in your mind and heart at this moment? You know, the, this is the moment that that has been waited for by millions, millions uh, throughout the centuries. So, uh, you know, in this country, Ram is such a part of everybody's life. Ram is actually the breath. Uh, you know, you greet people saying Ram Ram. When someone dies, you say Ram Nam Satya. Hai. You know, Ram has been such a part of life. You know, even Mahatma Gandhi, the, his last word was Hey Ram. Right. So, and this uh, moment is what people have been waiting throughout the country to see the Ram Mandir built in his birthplace. And when the judgment came, people wanted to celebrate right there. But it was the wisdom that they held back their enthusiasm, their, uh, their you know, feelings to celebrate at that moment. Now, that is being unleashed now. Now they can khul, khule aam sab celebrate kar sakte hai. Apna bhavnaon ko ye log abhi vyakt kar sakte hai. They can express their feelings on this a uh, very, very special and historic moment. Are you, uh, are you somewhat disappointed that this will not be a day of political unity, that sections of the opposition have decided not to come, that at least two of the four Shankaracharyas have some misgivings. Uh, they have made statements saying uh, that this is not the right timing, a temple's construction must be completed uh, before uh, before such a ceremony takes place. As one of India's leading uh, uh, spiritual gurus, what would you say to some of these uh, rejections of the invite or even what the two Shankaracharyas have said? Sanatan Dharma has many uh, school of thought and many philosophies are prevalent. There are many ways of worship in Sanatan Dharma. Actually, if you see, uh, there is nothing wrong in doing Pran Pratishta before the building is getting completed. For example, even Ram himself did the Pran Pratishta of Shivji in Rameshwaram, and there was no temple at the time. You know, temple was built by kings later on on the shivling that is in Rameshwaram. Similarly, where you take Kedarnath, you take Somnath, all this, there are ample examples to say that once the main place is ready, uh, without even having the shikar and the completion of the other aspects of temple, you can do Pran Pratishta, number one. Second is, see, uh, it's not a new place. A new place has a different formula. That is, if, if it's a barren land, which was never been a temple before, 
So there the rules are you build the temple, complete it and then do the Ram Pratishta. Here Ramlal Virajman has been there for a long time. Ramlal, you are showing the Ramlala, he has been there. And so the presence of Lord Ram has always been there. And so now this is the sort of uh, re-establishing his, uh, his uh, presence in the Ramlala Virajman. Yeah. So as, as you, you've explained that uh, very, very simply, you, of course, I imagine are going to be uh, part of this moment of national uh, celebration and sentimentalism. How will you be marking the day in your own unique way? I'll be present there. I will witness it. Barka, as I said, you know, before also, Ram is in our heart. Ram is an internal phenomenon. It's a spiritual energy. That is what is Ram for me. But the, the culture and the tradition of this country, the civilization, is built around the temples, built around a place of worship. And that need to be um, celebrated with all its gaiety and, you know. Temples yes. have not been yes. the place of only rituals. It has been the center of culture and art and civilizational, uh, you know, narratives for centuries. So um, Ram Temple will be a big pride for uh, all the Ram Bhaktas, the entire country as such. Yeah. Yes. You explained quite simply your uh, your counter to what two of the Shankracharyas have suggested or argued on the on 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 the timing. Uh, but you did not respond to my question about certain sections of the opposition. Um, not turning up for this event and you're you're chuckling because i think you were going to sidestep that question and keep far away from party politics as you often do but would you appeal to the opposition at this point even now to come to ayodhya on the 22nd of january what would you say gurudev absolutely absolutely i think this is an occasion where we must keep aside other politics and just join hands and be part of the celebration Anyone who misses the celebration will be losers because it is touching the emotions of the entire country. You know, cutting across the caste, cutting across religions, people are coming together and celebrating at this time. I don't think it's a, very, it's a wisdom to boycott this. See, uh, uh, the parliament building is built by uh, obviously one political party. And you can't say, I won't go into the parliament house because it was built by so and so. That doesn't mean um, make much sense. So I would say that this is an occasion. Politics is not all life is about. So you, it's, it's a part of life, no doubt. You should keep it aside, at least for this celebration, and rise above the differences and come together and be part of the emotions that the whole country is now exhibiting. Yes. Gurudev, I want you to take us back to the many years that you have been associated with this uh, Ram Mandir project, as it were, cause, movement. It goes back, as your writings have revealed in this past week and reminded us, uh, to the Vajpayee years, when Ashok Singhal, leader of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, he was very agitated. He had, in fact, gone on to a fast unto death, Vajpayee Ji, uh, forced him to break that fast. He was a bit annoyed. And he turned to you for intervention. Tapsi Leke, through the court uh, appointed years as mediator, you have been associated with this. So let's start with the Vajpayee years. At that time, in 2002, when Ashok Singhal approaches you, you know, did you ever think uh, that this would happen? Because it was one of the most volatile, divisive, dividing, polarizing uh, points of debate that time. Uh, you are you are absolutely right. That was a hot topic, and even um, Honorable Vajpayee he didn't know what to do, how to respond, and he was under tremendous pressure from um, Ashok Singhal and RSS. Everybody that even if the government goes off, uh, you know, falls, never mind. But he must declare Ram Janambhumi and get this uh, work done. And you know that was not never. Um, 
you know, it can never, could never be a solution. So uh, then he came to me, you have been showing in your um, here video, the Devkali Mandir, where, uh, which was in a dilapidated uh, condition, which, uh, you know, uh, it, it came to me as a vision that we had to, uh, you know, uh, first renovate the temple and uh, rejuvenate the pond, which is right in front of it, which was a garbage dump. And after that, I got this, uh, you know, I had the vision that it will, Ram Mandir will happen after 14 years. Then I assured Baj, uh, Ashok Singhalji, because Ashok Singhalji's one pointed agenda was to see Ram Mandir. He was so passionate. I mean, can you imagine an 80-year-old man traveling day and night and with so much vigor and force and energy and enthusiasm? It was, it is something to see, you know, when there is a passion, how it gives you so much energy, irrespective of your age. Mm -hmm. That you could see in uh, Ashok Singhalji. But as, as we all know, he was a firebrand and there was no way he could uh, do any, uh, he could be a bridge or he could do anything um, uh, that would bring um, comfort to people of different communities. He was, uh, he was like a bulldozer person. <laughs> he has his own ways, methods. Uh, but we had to take everyone with us, everyone together. You know, we should not hurt the other community also. No one should be hurt. Everyone should feel happy. And today I'm happy that's what happening. You know, so many Muslims are pa taking part in the Ayodhya Ram Mandir. And Barka, I would like to tell you, even during the mediation time, no single Muslim leader hmm. were opposed to Ram Mandir. They were only trying to find... What is the solution? How we can make this happen? How we can come together in harmony? You know, bhaychara to sabka agenda hi tha. Sabka man mein ye tha ki hum bhaychara nahi ho ne denge, bigad ne denge. We have to find a solution. But they had the religious restriction. Hamne itne saare imamon se mile. Kuch imamon ka ye tha. Ki ye man, ye, ek, once it's a masjid, it will always be a masjid. You can never give it away. Kuch log ne ye bhi kaha, hum de nahi sakte, magar aap le sakte ho. Aap le li jiye. So, they know that Babri Masjid was not a sacred place, while it is very, very important place uh, of identity for Hindus. So, uh, and there was a fear, there was a concern if there are 3,000 other masks, same thing happens. What will happen? And how can we face any community? You know, it was a matter of face saving for people and uh, honoring their own self-respect. Someone who has broken the masjid, how we can give them a masjid? These were all the concern. So in one tune, both the Hindus... Uh, Nirmohi Akhada and others, which you are showing also, they came to me in 2017, as well as the Muslim side. They both asked me, Gurudev, we trust you, we have trust in you, you stand up and we will find a solution. Hmm. And so then I uh, started working on this and, you know. The rest, the rest of this the industry. Of everybody, yeah. Nirmohi Akhadas, the, uh, the Mahans were here, you know, when he came, he was 90 year old person and there was tears in his house. Gurudev, will I ever be able to see the Ram Mandir? I'm so glad that today he will be able to see the Ram Mandir that's happening. You know, um, you also have spoken about how the justice, the chief justice of India, Justice Gogoi, he had a meeting with you. He told you that there are so many documents, eight trunks full of documents that are in Urdu and Hindi. These are going to have to be translated into English, which will only increase the number of trunks, trunks maybe add another four or five. It will take the number of trunks to 12. And he said, 
he said there has to be another way to do this. Uh, you know, talk about that conversation that you had with the Chief Justice. It would have taken them years. It would have taken them, I think he told you, two and a half years, three years, just to read all the documents. If you hadn't stepped in as media. He said, you know, if, even if you just to study these documents, if I put all the judges, he said it will take two years. So, uh, Gurudev, if you can talk to the parties and bring them to just on consensus few points or even few points of differences, then we will take it from there onwards. That's what his uh, saying was. And um, we did that. You know, it took us about eight months. Um, eight months every day we sat almost. Every and there were 25 and, uh, parties. There were 25 parties in this petition. This, this is a very, very unique thing in the whole world. No conflict has 25 parties in it. And then you have to talk to them all and then hear them all. You know, it took 8 to 10 hours every day we used to sit for 8 months and then, uh, you know, you know, whatever has happened. And, uh, and, and, but, and the Muslim but, leaders... But it's so, so beautiful to see that today um, the dream of millions have come true. At the same time, it has created such a sense of brotherhood and oneness in the country. And it's, it's a happy ending. Happy ending to a 500-year-old conflict. <laughs> yes, that's, that's well put. But let me ask you this. Uh, the Muslim leaders grew to trust you. They even at one point presented you uh, with Tulsi Das's Ramayana, but also with a copy of the Quran. How did you build the trust of the Muslim community? You know, uh, trust is not built only by talking to people. They see you, you know, they see your personality, they see your action. When your action, by your action, you you can see that you belong to everybody. You have your sincerity. My formula is clarity in mind, purity in heart and sincerity in action. That will resonate to everybody. You know, we convey more through our vibrations than through words. Right, Parka? So, uh, I, I don't know. Even I can't even explain how everyone trusts me. I think it's because you smile through everything. I think it's because the smile never goes from your face. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a very, very good uh, time for me to be with all the different communities. You know, we have been working also uh, in the Middle East, in in during the war in uh, Iraq, we have been working in uh, Syria, we have been working Lebanon, all those places. And people have seen that whatever we are doing, we are doing very with a genuine, uh, genuineness in it. So perhaps that has made people to uh, come together. And, you know, there were some people who were in the beginning were not very pleased. But then as the time went on, everyone came together and came to a good ending. Huh? Okay, Barka. Well, one last question before you. One last, one last question, question before you. It's, okay. it, it's two, just two, two minutes more. Uh, two questions, in fact, two last questions. One, you were in touch with the prime minister, uh, you know, when you were playing the role of a mediator. What was on his mind before the Supreme Court verdict came? What did Prime Minister Modi seek? Uh, in a sense, uh, before we knew that there would be a mandir in which way the Supreme Court verdict went? No, you know, um, I had one conversation with the Prime Minister before it, uh, before the, <coughs> to, to do an out-of-court settlement with the parties when the parties were um, coming forward towards me. Then Prime Minister, Gurudev, Supreme Court, mein, Supreme Court, jaise bolte, waise humko karna chahiye. As the Supreme Court says, we had to, we can only do like that. So he was very much uh, in tune with what Supreme Court wants to do and say, and he had total trust in the Supreme Court that they are going to do the best. Number one. Second, when I was appointed um, as the mediator, then Prime Minister said, uh, Gurudev, please go ahead and do talk to the parties. Um, so. 
he encouraged me to, the, to begin with in that. So his, his idea was not to hurt anybody. It's a very sensitive thing. Kisi tarah se sabka isme sauhard purni ye pura ho jaye desh ka badiya ho jayega. Ye ji manasik ta thi sab me us baat. Huh? Very okay. last question. Very last question. Promise, promise, last question. You said that a lot of Muslim leaders were very worried that ye ek bari hum ha bol denge to bar bar yehi hoga. I just want to ask you to be forward thinking. There are there is Gyan Bapi, there is Mathura. These are one is already in court, the other is possibly going to reach court. What would be your advice as somebody who has the trust of both communities? You know. Uh, how do we proceed and how do we tackle Gyan Bapi and Mathura? That's my last question. Barka, I, I would say we live in a civilized society. We should put an end to conflict. The only forward, way forward is three things. Dialogue, dialogue and dialogue. Thank That's you. well said. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Gurudev Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We need voices of peace, consensus building, and conciliation. Thank you so much for your time. Mojo Story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as is the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.